Welcome back. It's Vach, the Lombardi. We're going to continue our coverage on the Dallas Cowboys 2020 draft class, the phenomenal draft class. Today we're going to look at Neville Galmore from Oklahoma. Let's get right into it, running for the cardio. Um, when you're watching film on Neville Galmore, you got to watch with a lot of context. Um, you know, and you know, I don't like what the defensive coordinator for Oklahoma were, were asking his front seven guys to do. It was a lot of weird stuff, a lot of exotic looks, and I just I, di- I didn't think it was very practical. Um in a perfect world, Neville Galmore is going to be a three tech for you. He's going to line up in B gap between the guard and the center. He's just going to get upfield and destroy things. What they ask him to do at Oklahoma is sometimes they'll put him at zero. They'll put him at one tech. And I mean, he's fine at one tech, but he really makes his money in B gap. Um, but they'll line him up all over the place just to move him in another gap, just, just for the sake of being exotic. It wasn't very practical. It just wanted to be exotic. Let's just run some of this film. And this is the first play of the game. The first play of the game is what they do with Neville Galmore here. They're going to shift him to the left, but they're going to backer can feel front side. A. you see what I mean? Galmore is going to go across the center face and the get and the uh, backside linebacker is going to come up and he's going to end up patrolling a gap for what? <laughs> for, for, for what? Right. When he could have just been penetrating that gap and then the linebacker just penetrates this or, or just, you know, patrol this gap and we'll just be fine. Right. But that's one example. But I, I said that to say, just to give one example of, I think they just did a little bit too much. Less is more. In this defense, less should have been more. You got a pretty good defensive tackle and Neville Galmore, his first step, his explosion is ridiculous. You saw the quickness. Let's, let's run this play. Um, he has a first step, great explosion, but sometimes you'll just get him so out of position that the defense just kind of fails as a whole, in my opinion. Check him out right here. He's in B-gap where he's supposed to be. Look at his first step. Look at his quickness. Look at him getting off the ball, moving around, flying off the ball. But why do we have to take him from the right B-gap all the way to the left B-gap? Why is that, right? When he could just penetrate and just be 55. Just be 55. Right. The, this this backside B gap players ending up in a gap and stuff like that. It, 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 it was just really weird. Now, listen, tackle stunts happen all the time. But this is the second play of the game. <laughs> right? It's the second play of the game. Let's move forward. Let's look at the third play of the game. Let's see what they ask brother Neville Gallimore to do in the third play of the game. Now, he's a three tech and they line him head up over the center. Right. Let's see what happens here. Let's see what what brother Neville get. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, time out. We're going to shift all the way to B gap. We're going to get some movement going. We're going to shift the B gap and then Neville's going to end up uh end up patrolling C gap somehow. He's going to patrol C gap somehow. Our our um our our end is going to crash down and and follow that pull and Neville's going to get on the other side of these down blocks and he's just going to chase. Now, if we had to isolate this play and talk about the good things from Neville Galmore, okay, cool. I like the fact that he's getting down line. You know, he's a very active player, high motor player, great effort, stuff like that, good speed and all that. We can say that Neville Galmore ran like a what, a 4.740 or something like that? A 4.8 or some chat box? Um, You know, combine nerds help me out. Neville Galmore can fly. And I like that. But my problem is whatever happened to gap integrity, <laughs> just kind of hang where you at, hang where you at, man. Um, Oklahoma defense would have been so much better if they would just stay where they was at and just made plays on their own. Uh, I think, I think Galmore is getting a break right here. So let me fast forward to the next play. All right, cool. Neville's back on the field. Like I said earlier, man, I don't mind twists. I don't mind slants, gap exchanges. I don't mind none of that because that happens in football all the time. Stunts are a regular part of football. But Galmore's back on the field. Every single play he's been a part of, he has not penetrated the gap that he's lined up in at any point. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> at no point at, at no point has he done that he's in b gap right now he's gonna cross all the way over to a gap now now this is a a passing play right now how much more effective would neville have been if he would have just penetrated b gap right here and used his pass rush his use his pass rush moves in in b gap how much better would how much better would he have been instead of engaging with 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 three linemen with three offensive linemen I just think it was it was just doing a bit too much for the sake of doing it. He's back off the field. Wait a minute. <laughs> Let me go find him. 40. Here we go. Neville Galmore right here. A gap. Let's see what happens. And um, I have a second part to this film session, too. So y'all hang tight. But y'all see what I'm saying, though, right? Just a lot of movement, a lot of extra stuff, man. I just didn't like it. I wasn't a big fan of it. It, it just um, it just made my heart hurt, man. Galmore. 
He's going to move around. He's an A-gap right now. Watch yourself out of the play just for the sake of movement, man. So in my mind, as I'm watching film on Neville Galmore, let me get him back on the field. Um, as I'm watching film on Neville Galmore, I'm like, man, how much better would Neville Galmore be if he just stays in B-gap and just gets up field and just busts ass in B-gap? How much better would he be? Take a look at this play. Hold on. Let me roll back. Take a look at this play, right? Galmore and B-gap. No, nope, we're going to fly all the way to all the way to the A gap. We're going to run into somebody there. How much more effective would he have been? How many more how many more sacks would he have been? Now, if we had to break down this play and isolate different traits that we're looking for, I like the fact that Neville was aware enough to find the ball, get his hands up, and affect the pass. I like that. But in the grand scheme of things, right? In the grand scheme of things, how much better would Neville Galmore have been if he had some kind of gap integrity here? Let's take a look at take a look at this play, then we're going to move on. Same thing, same thing. Every play he's on the field, they moving him around. <sighs> I hated it. But so what I did was I cleaned this up, and um, you know, because in the senior bowl practice films, they kind of let everybody just go or whatever. So what I did was I took that that film of day one, two, and three, and I just chopped down where Neville was involved in the um in the in the pass rush or whatever. So these are senior bowl practices, right? This is what happens when Neville Galmore just to kind of you know he 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 lines up in B gap and he stays in B gap. Pardon me, I had a little sound on there. Pardon me. This is what happens when he lines up in B gap and he stays in B gap, right? Look at that ball get off, man. Look at that first step, hands, boom, get off of me, quickness, swim over the top. Capture the edge, swim back inside. Fantastic, Neville Galmore. Um, what happens here? Kind of, kind of gets in a little bit of a wrestling match right here. But what you see is you see the natural, natural strength, natural ball get off of Neville Galmore. Um, I said earlier in my um, live stream with Fuster King, I talked about it. Just anytime I talk about Neville, uh, Neville Galmore. One thing that I that I that I talked about is that if he beats you with his first initial wave, then he wins. But if you can withstand that and block him, he'll stay blocked. You see what I mean? So that's something Neville Galmore has to work on. He has to work on uh, negotiating his pass rush moves um, in and out, like being able to being able to reset a rush. Like what happens if Galmore comes off the ball, boom, 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 and 78 gets in a good space with him? Neville Galmore got to be, you know, he has to improve and, okay, cool, I'm here now, let me – reset this rush and do a move to get 78 off of me right i do think galmore got some pretty good penetration because he's just naturally strong right here but how much better would galmore have been if he could get this hand off of him right somebody in the chat box is gonna say well well vach he's holding 78 is holding but any good d-line coach to tell you and can i get an amen when i say this any good d-line coach to tell you that if you allow an offensive lineman to hold you that's your fault for letting them hold you don't let them hold you. Every good D-line coach says that. I've, I've heard 30 of them say that. So, sure, 78 may be grabbing some jersey here, and Neville Galmore is naturally powerful enough to beat him. But if your hands were fluid enough, he wouldn't hold you. But that's just that. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, wait, went back too far. Cool. We got uh, Neville Galmore versus my Michigan guard, uh, Bettison. He just got drafted uh, by the Ravens or whatnot. So some more real-life competition, man. Slap move, pop, quickness over the top. Fantastic Neville Galmore. It's Josh Jones right here. Now, listen, it's funny because at this point in my senior bowl coverage, I was saying, hey, Josh Jones lined up in guard. He'll be solid at guard until he lines up against some real tackles at guard. <laughs> and then Neville Galmore lines up against Josh Jones from Houston. Um and he just kind of runs through them. So that's real life. <laughs> that's real life, man. Um, back with Ben Bredesen right here, right? Here's another example. Neville Galmore, um, are you going to beat him with your, you know, with your first step? Are you going to beat him with your initial speed? Get off the ball, boom, boom, boom. If he's able to get hands on you, I need you to have like a move to get him. We, uh, we do kind of see this hand trying to fight off of him, but it's a little late. The reaction's a little bit late. You see what I mean? Um, at some point, Neville's just going to keep doing this and doing it and doing it, and he's going to develop. It's going to get to a point to where if you want to swipe that hand down, don't swipe it right here. See Neville trying to come back over the top to get the hands off right there? Once these guards get their hands on you, it's hard for them to get their hands off you because they're so strong. Guards and 
offensive linemen are naturally supposed to be more powerful than D linemen naturally, or at least we approach the game that way. So instead of swiping here or, or, you know, like arm over here, Melville Gallimore, you're going to get to a point to where you're going to come off the ball. Boom, boom, boom. You're going to feel that. And then you're going to arm over there at this point. You see how the, um, how the guard is like, See how he's resetting the rush, how he's resetting his hands. That's what Neville Gallimore needed to do right at this point. When the guard, when um, uh, Bettison, Ben Bettison, when he reset his hands, Gallimore needs to come over the top right there to reset his. But like I said, man, that's small technical nuance things. And, and just watching, uh, watching Oklahoma's defense, maybe they didn't go over this stuff because they had him so busy swimming and, and running around and slanting and stuff and getting lateral down the field or whatnot. So, um, you know, maybe that's why you know his 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 um his hand technique, his rush moves. Maybe that's why they're not as nuanced as they could be. But, you know, he hung in there, man. He was fighting with him. And um, I added this here to um to show you guys Neville Galmore rushing from one tech. So, um, is it a situation where hey Neville Galmore is playing three tech for you, and we get into some kind of NASCAR package? Um, do you want to put Neville Galmore at one tech and just? You know, let him be quick on the inside if you want to. Let him be quick on the inside. It's him beating the hell out of Matt Hennessy. Matt, hey, look, I tell y'all what. I know a lot of Cowboys fans wanted to, wanted to draft Hennessy. One. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I ain't want to hold y'all too too long, man. This is this is the end of my presentation. I wanted to show y'all some film of him, um, film of him uh, playing like in the actual college game and how Oklahoma kind of held him back. And then when he was doing what he was supposed to do in senior bowl practices, they just kind of line him up and B gap and let him penetrate. I think that's what the Cowboys are going to end up doing. All right, insight, insight and analysis. Um, check out my on-demand live stream. Me and Fusta King broke down the uh, Cowboys draft. It's about an hour, 30 minutes. And um, you can go to the Neville Galmore section where me and Fusta kind of break down the player. You can get some more information there. All right, um, look out for more film, man. Y'all hold it down for the Doski, Woski, and the Peaski, Weeski, man. Salute. The YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators, and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that subscribing on my Patreon. Just $1 a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M&Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon-exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's patreon.com slash Lombardi. I appreciate the support. Doski Woski. Salute.